Hello, and welcome to Wednesday Night Programming at Covenant Presbyterian Church. My name is Laura Schieber. Today, we are going to continue learning about Jesus' life. If you will recall, earlier this month, we learned that Jesus was, a, was born in Bethlehem in a manger, and the wise men and the angels and the shepherds were all a special part of his birthday. Then we learned how Jesus was a little boy and had to escape or move away to a country called Egypt to avoid the evil king. And then Jesus grew up a little more and moved back to his hometown and got lost one day while traveling with his parents and ended up in the temple, which is God's house. And his parents found him and brought him home. Well, now Jesus is a young man and we learn a little bit more about his friends that were also called the disciples. But there was a special man in Jesus' life named John. John was Jesus' cousin. I bet you guys have some cousins you can think of. Cousins are awfully very fun. But this cousin, John, was given a special job by God. His job was to tell people all about God and about Jesus. And John, he was a little bit of a particular man. He liked to live in the wilderness. He didn't live in a town or a city. He liked to live in a tent. And there weren't a lot of grocery stores back then, so he hunted and scavenged for his food, which means he kind of ate whatever he could find. So if that was bugs, he ate bugs. If it was leaves, he might eat leaves. Maybe he could catch a rabbit or a squirrel or whatever else they might have had around there. But John was a very special man. He did not worry about the small things in life, but focused on the big things like God's love and making the way for Jesus. So let's get on our listening ears and open up our Sparks Bible to page 235. And this story will be in the New Testament, so it's closer to the end of your Bible than to the beginning. If you get ready here, find that page 235. We're going to listen to Jean read us this. Hello, everyone. This week, we're going to learn a story about a man named John. Who was John? He was Jesus's cousin, but he was older than Jesus. And God had given him a special job. So I am going to read the story of a man that they eventually called John the Baptist. And by the time I'm done, you'll know why they did it. John was an unusual man. He had lots of hair and a long beard. His clothes looked like his face. They were furry and hairy too. His clothes were made of camel's hair held together with a leather belt. John ate very strange foods, probably not to him, but to us, because he ate grasshoppers and wild honey and locusts and probably even some bumblebees. John gave John, God gave John a very important job. His job was to tell the people that Jesus was coming and help them get ready to believe that Jesus was the one that would teach them all about God. John knew the things Jesus would tell them were the most important things in the world. When John taught the people, he stood by a river and he yelled out, Hey, all of you, tell God you're sorry for the things you've done bad. Turn your life around and act in ways that are good and honest. Then he would turn to another group and he'd shout, Hey, over there, are you listening? This is important. Jesus is coming. He is God's messenger. He will save all of us. Day after day, John continued teaching and preaching and crying out so people would listen. Many people came to hear what John had to say about Jesus. There were rich people and poor people and honest people and not so honest people, nice people and not so nice people. Some people listened to John but some people didn't. Some people said, that must be a messenger from God. But other people said, he is very strange. He is very scary. I'm getting out of here. Many people believed the message John told him. Those people said, 
I am sorry for the bad things I've done. I want God to forgive me. To those people, John said, God does forgive you. He baptized those people in the river. The people started to call him John the Baptizer. And eventually, he was just John the Baptist. He'd done a very good job. The people were ready to hear the message that Jesus would bring to them. Do you have any do you have any questions for us? Yeah, I, one th one thing makes me think. You you said that John and Jesus were related. They were cousins. Ah, okay. And and you also said that God had a special job for John. And that job was to go and tell all the people that Jesus was coming and that he would be able to lead them and tell them how to live a good life. Thank you. Do you have anything else to ask? Oh, uh, only... The John was a very interesting person, and all the things that he ate. And would you eat some of those things, Jerry? Yes, I would. Okay, for supper, we're probably going to have chocolate-covered grasshoppers. Okay. <laughs> I hope you all have a very good week. We'll see you next time. That is really silly. Do you guys think Gina Jerry... Are really going to eat bugs for dinner? That would be crazy. Would you guys like to have bugs for dinner? I definitely would not. But talking about bugs brings us to our craft for today. We are going to make grasshoppers, which can also be called locusts, which is a bug that is referenced a lot in the Bible. Back in the Bible times, locusts would come in great, huge, big groups, like big swarms, and they would eat all the farmer's crops. So they were sometimes thought of as a pest, but they were also a good source of vitamins and nutrients when you were someone like John, who was living in the forest or in the desert without anything else to eat. So today I thought it would be fun if you guys could make your very own grasshopper. In the craft kit that you were able to pick up outside the church is a stencil outline and instructions or coloring or painting your own grasshopper, cutting it out and gluing it together. I would love to see the grasshoppers that you guys are able to make, whether you use the craft kit or you draw a picture of a grasshopper all on your own. If you could, have your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever's helping you take a picture of it and email it to me. I would love to see how artistic you guys are and what beautiful things you are making. I hope you have fun and enjoy doing your craft. Now we are going to hear from William, who is going to review all the songs we have learned so far this month. There are three total. And if you recall, the first one was about when Jesus was a baby. And then the second one was about Jesus growing up. And the third one is about Jesus's friends, the disciples. And if you listen closely, you'll hear that John's name is actually in the song. So let's put on our listening ears again and listen and sing along with William. Here we go. Hi kids. Tonight we're going to review the songs that we've learned over the past three weeks. Let's start with the first song, O Come Little Children. O come little children, O come one and all, O come song from our second week, The Bible Tells Us Jesus Grew. Here we go. The
Here's the song from our third week, There Were Twelve Disciples. There were twelve disciples, Jesus called to help him, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, his brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, and goodness. Great job singing. It is so fun to remember all those songs and sing them again with William. That pretty much wraps up our lesson for tonight. We are going to close in the Lord's Prayer, which as you remember is a special prayer that Jesus taught us and it is listed at the end of the New Testament in the Bible. I want you all to fold your hands and you can bow your head, close your eyes, or you can watch and read the words on the screen with us. Here we go, ready to get ready to pray. Let us pray now the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.